Good morning. I'm the first one here this morning at California Carnivores. It's a beautiful sunny morning. Um, and today I want to talk about a seldom discussed, uh, poorly understood skill set, which is dealing with all the moss sporophytes that pop up in our carnivorous plant pots. Um, moss generally isn't too, um, you know, it's not bad for carnivorous plants. In fact, a nice mossy carpet on a bog garden is really pretty. But they reproduce with these little sporophytes. They reproduce with spores that come from these little sporophytes. They look like little orange hairs with little green, uh, little green like nubs hanging on the end. And when they build up, it can become unsightly and it can reduce airflow and light, which can choke out smaller plants and encourage rot. So I was just looking at my Venus flytraps and going, ah, oh, geez, these are really out of control. So let's take a look at that. So these are all my dormant, Venus flytraps. This is the Venus flytrap collection of California carnivores. And in most of these pots, the flytraps have died back to their little um, pseudo bulbs and a few small leaves. But mostly all we can see now are just these clouds and clouds and clouds of moss sporophytes. I'll do another video sometime to explain what these sporophytes do and how they work because it is really fascinating and cool and I'd love to tell you all about it. But today we're gonna talk about how to get rid of them. So you can cut them away with scissors, and I'll show you that, but I find that a little bit awkward. What I'm going to do is show you my uh, technique that I've developed over the years of gently pulling this away without scissors and without disturbing the plants below. So here we go. You can't hardly even see the Venus flytraps anymore. They are in there, they're dormant. They've died back to a pseudobulb because it's January right now. And they have a few small traps that aren't too functional, but help to get them through the winter. But all these moss sporophytes are really choking up the pots and it's time to deal with that. So it's a little bit tricky. If you pull all at once, if you pull this whole clump all at once, you're gonna pull, see that? I'm starting to pull the whole edge of the pot up. And that's gonna disrupt roots. If you're doing this in small pots like sundews with like small plants, that could wreck plants. And it's not that great for the fly traps either to pull big chunks of the peat moss out like that. So this is the what I've developed over the years. And you have to practice at this. It's not, it's one of those th skill sets that not too many people have and nobody's taking the time to practice except for me. But I'm gonna try and teach you it because it's weird, funny. So if I pull just a few at a time, that doesn't happen. So what I start to do is I, I kind of just let half of them slide through my fingers and leave the leaving those and pull about half out. And that way I'm not ever pulling out a big chunk of hair and pulling it all up like that. I'm just pulling a few out at a time. Like one at a time obviously would be the perfect way to do this, but who has the time for that? I've got a lot to do. So I try to pull about, I don't know, 10 or 15 maybe at a time. And as I do that, I'm gathering them up into my hand because if you just leave it like that, that's not gonna look real great at the end. And then I'll show you the bucket when I'm done. There'll be a mountain of this. And so you don't wanna just throw it on your gravel down here. It'll be a big mess. So I'm just gonna start doing that. There's a lot to do here, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done, all cleaned up and they'll be ready for the spring and looking really super good. Now, don't be discouraged when these come back. They're always gonna come back in a few months. It's the kind of thing that you're gonna have to do over and over and over again. That's plantiness, that's the zen of plants. All right, well, here I go. Um, stay tuned for what it looks like when we're done. Okay, so about an hour later and all the sporophytes are cleaned off. Well, maybe not every sporophyte, but most of them. Never let perfect be the enemy of good in your life, but especially with plants. But I got almost all of them off and to my eye, it looks way better. Lots more light and air reaching all the real plants that I wanna grow. And check this out. To figure out what to do with moss sporophytes make a sweater or something. 
So I know lots of us have different levels of dexterity and we don't all have narrow little bird fingers for pulling moss square fights off. I mean, I do. But small pots like this can be kind of tricky anyways. When you start to pull it off, it really does want to pull the whole surface of the soil off. So scissors are good. Very sharp scissors, so it doesn't just fold them. Otherwise, it will just kind of like fold and just cut it over and over again. But sharp scissors will make pretty quick work of this. Watch out for your fly trap in there. The only thing I don't like about it is it does leave this kind of um, sporophyte orange stubble, but that'll go away after a little while. And if you're a very persnickety trimmer, you can get rid of most of it. Oh, whoopsies. <laughs> If you ever break a tag, I always just stick it right back in the pot. It'd be great if you had the time to go rewrite it right now, but if you stick it in there, you'll be able to piece it together later.